Hello again. This is the Math Ninja. Um, I won't. I'll be continuing the lecture on completeness, but well, in lieu of this problem set, I wanted to review some terms of uh, discrete of the topology and metric spaces, and closed sets, open sets, and topology in general, generalized. So, let us begin. Let's see. I guess first thing I should do is, oh, by the way, I tried the, the lid. It, it did not go look too well on YouTube. So I decided to clean up the board with some nail polish. And now I'll be using this to write equations on. So it'll be much more organized. But to make sure that this is on a Friday or Saturday night so that the computer cluster is empty. Yeah, walk in, there's someone dressed up as a ninja. Quite a scary thing. Mm. Anyway. So, uh, so let's first define a metric space. So if you study groups, you remember in a, met in a group, you need a binary operator and a set. <coughs> Very simple, similar with metric space. You need a space M for a metric space. You need a space M along with a distance function D where D takes M by M, Cartesian product, two, two objects from M, and sends it to the real numbers. So, but this distance function has to fill three important properties. Well, let's see. Well, a semi-metric has to fulfill two properties. First, it has to fill symmetry, um, yes. <coughs> symmetry, so the words, D of x, y equals D of y, x. Secondly, like with the real numbers, <coughs> well, you shouldn't use an example of that because we, well, an example, we also need the second one, we need non negativity. Is it recording? Yes. Non negativity. So d of x comma y has to be greater than or equal to zero, and only equal zero if and only if x equals y. <coughs> now, fill these two. In your semi-metric, we need a third property though for a metric. Very important property. Equals d of x <coughs> So for d of z is less than or equal to. So given three objects, x, y, and z, distance between x and z is less than or equal to distance between x and y plus distance between y and z. <coughs> this is known as the triangle inequality. Very easy example of a metric. Uh, the real numbers have the absolute value. In R, Rn, we have the... <coughs> Oh, we can define a metric via a norm, but we're not going to talk about norms for today. <coughs> no. So that's a metric. Now let us define some objects on the metric space. So if you've ta done uh, topology before, set theory before, you're probably familiar with opens and closed sets. But we're going to do it this time uh, with Instead of norms, we're going to use it using the distance function, d. So, let's define first an open wall. It's going to be the set, uh, let's, see. let's call it d, at point x, where x is in m, and a radius, r. r is in the real numbers. Well, no. R is in R positive. You have to have a <coughs> positive radius. Well, non-negative. As you can say, well, let's just say positive. Defined as open. Well, we have to prove it later on that open balls are open. But let's just say <coughs> D of it's equal to the set of Y where <coughs> the distance between y 
comma x is less than r. Find a closed ball. Same thing. Distance between x and r is equal to y of d of y comma x less than or equal to r. That's a closed ball. So now we're going to define openness and closeness. Openness means for any point in the space. Meaning all points. I can pick a point. And I can draw for any epsilon. <coughs> there exists, I mean not any epsilon. There exists an epsilon greater than zero. So I can draw a ball. A ball with radius epsilon, such that the ball lies entirely in the set. Now, you should never trust, this is just an example picture, but there's many complicated pictures of openness and closeness. Now, <laughs> so pick a point, you can draw a ball, an open ball, and it lies entirely in the space. For every point, this is open. For closed, Something that is closed, it's if the complement of the space. So let's see, if this is closed, I look at everything except this, and I check if the complement of that space is open. That's the definition of closed. However, you can show many equivalences. For example, uh, let me remember one of them. A set is closed if for every convergent sequence in the set, so we pick out a sequence, it must converge to an element in that set. So, convergence. <coughs> so that's closed. Let us define two more things. Uh, I have one minute and 30 seconds. So probably. Well, I think I have a minute. So let us first define the interior. So the intuition of this, well, you should never trust intuition entirely, but it's always good to understand some sort of intuition, especially when writing a proof. But remember, intuition, never a proof. Picture, never a proof. Maybe in physics, but not, no, I'm just joking. I, I love the physics people. I, I just don't like some of their work sometimes. Anyway, so if you think, so the intuition behind this is we want an open set contained within the set. We want the largest open set such that it's contained in the set. And something similar called a closure. We want the largest closed set such that the set is contained in the closed version of the set. So yeah, I'll just stop really quick and then continue.